Usually I don't actually require a microphone, it'll be fine. Um, my name's Amanda, and sitting in front of you are the vast majority of the team that organized the first WordCamp Boston five years ago. And in a lot of cases, the people that are still doing it today are responsible for lead up and everything else. Um, when I proposed this talk, and <laughs> it's totally my fault, um, the reason that I did it was, and I think, I'm uh, oh, sorry, uh, Jake, how did you put it? The, the thing we want everyone to walk away with? Thank you. Yes. Sorry, <laughs> <You. laughs> <laughs> now it's mine? Yes. So sort of the purpose of this talk, so the, the thing we want people to walk away with? It was so. very important to Jake that yes. you all understand clearly the objective of the talk and the value proposition that you will walk away with. Take it away, Jake. So it's clear that I understand it well. <laughs> Too. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think the purpose of this talk is to sort of give a sense of both what being part of a community accomplishes for both that community and for the people that give. I think the main objective here is to sort of show that when you come into a community and you immerse yourself in that community, you know, you, you give back, but you often get back more than you give. Um, I think we all at this table, I think, experience that. Um, I think many of our careers were sort of in their early formative points at least in terms of our involvement in WordPress specifically in this community. And I think for many of us, it, I know speaking for myself, it was an inflection point for my career, getting involved and really volunteering and contributing. So um, there was a security um, breach a couple of hours ago, or there was one of the security issues with WordPress about, oh, really? I really need the microphone? This never happens. I'll try harder. There was a security issue uh, with all the open source stuff, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And there was this really interesting article talking about the difference between the way that Drupal alerted everybody and the way that WordPress alerted everybody. And that Drupal's alert was this like highly technical, like in line 43, you'll find this, we subbed it out, whatever. And that the alert that WordPress gave was like this really flowery narrative about how we all work together to find a solution. And I really think that like really, it really points to something very clear about WordPress, which is that um, the thing that makes WordPress special amongst all the open source software and the CMSs out there is the community. Um, it's not just a word. Um, and what makes up a community is really us. And the only thing that is required um, to be part of this community is awareness and willingness. And to me, that's actually why you guys are here today, why we have WordCamps, to make you aware of the community so that you have the opportunity, if you're willing, to take part in it. Um, okay, so, so sorry, getting there. Uh, there are about 3,000 people to date is what I sort of figured out, but my math is not so good, who have opted into either the Boston Word Camps or the Meetup, um, which to me seems fairly phenomenal, right? That over the past five years, that many people have been affected. We have one of the largest WordCamps in the country. We for sure have one of the largest WordPress meetups in the country. Um, when we looked at the schedule today to figure out where we kind of fit into the talks, we sort of figured that most of the people here were not developers. Is there anybody in the room that's actually a developer? For <laughs> <laughs> reals? That is so awesome. I take that as a high compliment, as you guys should as well. We actually just figured you guys would be at the other session. But fair enough, welcome. Um, so what we want to impress upon you guys is how we got here and the point that if you contribute to this community, the community is going to give back to you. Sometimes it's really hard to understand what the point of contributing is or if you have the skill set to contribute. Um, and when I thought about this group of seven people and the two people that are missing from the table, uh, Daisy and Chris, what I was so fascinating about it was that every single person here has such a wildly different skill set and all did these wildly different things for the community. And yet, you're also looking at some of the most, to me, Jake, close your ears, you don't need any more in your, you know, some of the most important people in the WordPress community today. And if you look at the people who have spoken at our WordCamps or whatever, I mean, these are some of the, even when we went back five years, these are some of the most important people in WordPress. So. It all started with seven willing people. These people at the table. Eight. Was it eight? Yeah. She did say her math wasn't that Two, good. Two, four, six. 
Oh, you're right. I didn't right. read ceramics. Math is not my thing. Huh. All right. Um, so many paths to contribute. Our point today is to make sure that everybody here knows that there's at least one way that they can make a difference. John, you want to take the from along? Sure. So, I, I mean, I think uh, one of the things that I was thinking about is how we ended up here. And, and so, you know, uh, circa 2008, as I started kind of shifting a career from uh, being in, in development in general in agencies and, and really starting to focus in on open source, you can go ahead and the next slide. Um, you know, the Boston WordPress meetup started in 2008, I believe. I missed the first two meetups. The first two meetups were actually at bars in Cambridge and were about half a dozen people. Right around the time that I joined, there was probably a dozen to 20 of us meeting on a regular basis at the Nerd Center. Um, so I had been involved in the Bar Camp uh, organization in Boston, had kind of seen how conferences work, had been part of DrupalCon, which was a big conference in Boston, and realized there had never been a WordCamp in Boston. So I had this crazy idea, I'll just organize one. I had no effing idea what was going to be involved, how many people were going to come. I said in this message, like, I'm imagining a one-day event held on a Saturday. You know, I'm thinking about some venues. I was thinking it would be 100 people would be crazy, right? Um, and had really kind of no sense of what I was getting into, that the rules, the WordPress Foundation didn't exist yet. So I just picked a date at a venue and said, okay, it's January 21st, here we go. Uh, and what was amazing to me was how many people sort of answered that call and really just jumped on board and got involved and everything that sort of cascaded down from there. Not that I claim responsibility for it, but that it was kind of amazing to see all I did was kind of catalyze one moment and send out one email that said, I think this is a good idea. And people just came out of the woodwork to help. I think Mitchell was actually the first to respond to my email. I looked back uh, at that email from 2009 recently. Uh, and then Jake, Amanda, and I all met up at WordCamp New York in uh, the fall of 2009, sat on a floor in a venue much like this and started plotting out what would become the best WordCamp ever. But to also give you some credit, you had been really involved in Boston events previous to that, like Bar Camp, right? Yes, I did. I had a sense of what it takes to organize an event, if that's true. I didn't know how big WordCamp would get or how long it would be, but um, I did have some friends. So we had a lot of fun looking back at 2010. We found things like this. <laughs> so prior to the event, we asked people to actually submit videos, um, all of us telling people. I mean, it was a huge event. It was 500 people at NERD. Um, people were relatively crammed in. Um, and every morning, we sent out these videos trying to hype the event to everyone. These were the first, these were the first volunteer hoodies. Now you see all the camps have volunteer hoodies. It's one of the incentives for volunteers. This is where they started. Um, got everything made locally. Great example of Amanda's tastefully restrained design. <laughs> Was <there> what? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, and actually, uh, Daisy, who did all of the, the theming and everything else, um, it was, you know, it was one of the very, there were very few camps back in 2010. I mean, there were probably, what, five across the country? So this was, it was not just one of the earliest camps. It was, at the time, Huge. There was New York, there was San Francisco, and then there was us, and we were we were pretty big. We all had a lot more hair than. Oh. <laughs> um, this was where Jane Wells announced. Uh, sorry, Jen Milo announced uh, the for make the formation of WordCamp or WordPress Foundation. Um, we had. I mean, when you look at the speakers there, what was so funny to me is you see like Brad Williams and Shane Sanderson and. Uh, Boone and, and Brian Gardner, and five years ago, I mean, they were they were people within the community then, but like when you look now at the heavy hitters for our industry, that's them. And you know, when you look at the past five years of our WordCamp. Yeah, that's... this was, just before you move on from this slide, so this is Doc Searles, Dave Weinberger, and Scott Kirshner. So my, like, the Clue Train Manifesto is to me still one of the best books about the web ever written, and to have 50% of the authorship of that show up and do a keynote for free, I was like, this community rocks, this is amazing. I sent them an email and said, hey, we're holding this big conference, it's a relatively cheap thing, it's open source, it's community oriented. They weren't necessarily WordPress users, they weren't WordPress people, but they saw a community that was interested in their conversation and they showed up and keynoted it. And then I had the horror of having Doc Searles stuck, unable to get out of the nerd parking garage oh, that's right. because of the fiasco right. of the parking ticket, about how he was trapped in a Microsoft building. 
Um, so, I mean, I will uh, never live down with Doc. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. I forgot about that. I mean, we did. I mean, what's important to note, like, we had these fabulous, like, internet luminaries there, and then we had this. <laughs> where we thought, actually, I will take full responsibility for this, that it would be really <laughs> funny to put various plug-in heads and, uh, in sumo suits and have them wrestle it out on the floor while Corey Miller of iThemes and Brian Gardner, who was then, uh, well, before was copy blogger, it was uh, Studio Press. Right? Yeah, Studio Press, uh, moderated. So, uh, yeah, that happened. <laughs> this was this was the point at which I had to put on my organizer hat and read very carefully the event insurance waiver to try to figure out without asking them, are we allowed to do sumo wrestling? And there are certain things you can't do in an event insurance waiver, but sumo wrestling was not on that list. Yes. Weirdly enough, they also didn't outlaw nerdcore rapping, but we did that too. Both now not allowed. Now not allowed. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. All right, hold on. Let me get back to where. Oh, Kurt, fix it. I did it. Wait, hold on. It's technical. There we go. I was going to get there. Um, okay, so uh, 2010 WordCamp was a wild success. I mean, people still talk about it. It was, it was one of the first camps, too, where there was a really vast involvement from the local community. We had legal seafood, don't eat chowder. And, um, I mean, it was the first one where you saw this great involvement from sponsors. We had, uh, what was it, uh, Cloud, one of the hosts, uh, Cloudflare or somebody, and they did a, a blue cotton candy that they handed out to everybody. Um, you know, it, it, people talked about it for a while. It was a great camp. And it was so great that it then, of course, spawned a much higher intensity meetup. Kurt, take it away. Yeah, so I guess when we started, when James started, um the Boston WordPress meetup back in December of 2008. Like John had mentioned, it started in a bar. Uh, we grew quite a bit to move to Microsoft Nerd, but eventually right after camp, there was an even bigger demand. So before we only had an hour session where we talked about you know, just anything WordPress, um, the demand was there for developers and for beginners to have their own talk. So we decided to split into two tracks, and this just blew up. With, with the uh, addition of WordCamp and um, the involvement, it was just incredible. So, and we should mention, I mean, we, we were doing some great things with that local meetup. I mean, this was like a monthly event, but we were videotaping talks. They were being distributed, right? I mean, and, and there's a wonderful contribution of the Microsoft Nerd Center, right, providing food as well. And so it was a, it was a very it was a you know very well organized monthly community event. I think we, we might have been one of the first to record our meetups and have them archived, um, and it's still archived today. And now, mm -hmm. I mean, with the help of Tom, who is back there somewhere, or no, Ray goes back there. But um, I mean, they've helped out a lot in catalog categorizing and cataloging all of our past events and meetups. So just you just have to search YouTube. I mean, everything's there. And sometime in here, you guys started doing the free WordPress uh, uh, sessions, correct? That's yes, later? Okay, my bad. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, oh, go, okay. So, yeah, so, so, yeah, so in, in 2011, so we, we wanted to reprise uh, the great success we had in WordPress WordCamp 2010. The original one was at the Microsoft Nerd Center, which is basically down the street from here. Wonderful space. There were uh, there were certain things that we were not thrilled about it, and one of them was sort of limitations on the capacity and sort of physical size. You know, John mentioned you know he was thinking you know this might be a hundred people or something, but that initial one we had to cap, and we kept sort of negotiating with the Nerd Center to expand, <laughs> like, can we, can you actually fit 70 in this room? And we kept, we kept, we off tickets, didn't we, at the oh end? Oh, God. We, we, we kept, it, it, it was an amazing success, amazing turnout. Um, and so quickly after the 2010 WordCamp, we immediately started looking into other venues in the area. And what we found for 2011 was at BU, uh, at the Student Union at BU, um, which is a, 
which was a great venue we used for uh, a number of years. And something else um, in 2011 we, that I think is worth highlighting is we, we continued to bring together a lot of wonderful speakers, uh, you know, a good mix of local speakers um, from the region, but also big names in the WordPress community. Uh, so Andrew Nason and, and Daryl Coopersmith came out um, at that time, and also uh, we invited John Resig, uh, creator of jQuery, who's, who's local, he lived in Somerville, um, and he came and he uh, asked me, because I was organizing the, the program, he came and, and he was like, Mitchell, can, can I just, do you have a whiteboard or a blackboard? And we were like, um, maybe? And he, uh, we found uh, a blackboard. He uh, chose not to use his slides, and he went to the blackboard with Chalk and explained in his talk, uh, you know, how the uh, query selector engine works in jQuery on a blackboard, and it was fantastic. So we, you know, continued this tradition of having exceptional speakers, um, and not just speakers limited to sort of the WordPress community, but, but related communities as well. The other thing that I love, which Mitchell pointed out in his intro talk at WordCamp Boston, was the first year was January 23rd, was the coldest day on record that year. The second year was July 23rd, and it was the hottest day on record. So we had gone through the two extremes of temperature. Since then, we've moderated a little bit <laughs> for fall and spring. Fair enough. So, uh, okay. So Meetup continues to grow. Um, yeah, the Meetup continued to grow. Um, we you know, had with, a thousand with popularity from 2011, um, that's when we started to create our own <laughs> workshops. Um, we tried to incorporate them into not only WordCamp, but outside of WordCamp with the Meetup. And it was a great way to get back, to get beginners involved. Um, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, right? We want to get people interested in WordPress. We want people to use it so that developers like you have jobs and you guys can, you know, they can hire you to either develop their sites or design their sites. Um, but yeah, moving on, I mean, I'm just going to on the slide. Uh, let me see, 2011, we got 1,000th member, which is huge. Um, because at that time, I mean, the only, there were a couple of big meetup groups. Um, Boston PHP is obviously number one in the world. Um, but for WordPress, we were, you know, fastly approaching number two. Um, so with 1,000, we were thrilled. And a couple months later, um, we had to add another organizer. Uh, John, who's not here, um, stepped in and, you know, that's when we knew we couldn't handle it anymore. <laughs> Um, we had to bring someone else in. And uh, so this is the third work camp. Eric, why don't you talk about that? Um, <laughs> Possibly into a microphone. Yes. Um, so yeah, we went uh, back to BU again for uh, 2012. Sold even more tickets, um, 576 that year, and that was when we started to do the the second full uh, Sunday doing the contributor day something that a lot of camps now uh, do and is pretty standard, but um, we, uh, we wanted to bring that in and uh, it's now again yeah, become a, a pretty standard thing. And we also this year started doing uh, the workshops on Friday as a prelude to the work camp. So it became in a lot of ways a three-day event with 2012. And again, you uh, allowed us to scale to that size. I'd like to also give a hat tip to Matt and uh, Shay Uva, who did the great design. So this is when we started what I call the theme designs. So 2012 being sports, and then 2013 being Halloween, and 2014, you'll notice it's science-themed. Um, really started to, to bring, I think, a level of sophistication to our logos and shirts and stuff that I really appreciate. So that's when you start to see the meetup and the community here involved with what you kind of recognize now, right? Um, with a lot of the current organizers, and it seems like that's the point at which the meetup starts to match a little bit more with WordCamp, too, and that there's more of a united front. Uh, would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it only took a couple months, and, you know, between John and myself, I think this was at the point where James left, um, we had to add even more organizers. I mean, it, it was just out of our control. So, Tana was not here, Tom and go in the back, Kelly and Mel, who were, who's done a great job this year. Um, we brought them on as organizers, and, and there's still a lot of organizers today. Uh, and that led, of course, to the first half day here. Yep. Um, so 
we didn't have an event, or an official event, where we actually gave back to the community. So um, Kelly and Mel decided, you know, let's, let's have a hack day. Let's put a couple of developers together. Let's give back to the WordPress community and contribute to Core. Um, and it was, a, it was a full day. I didn't help out much, but everyone else did. <laughs> um, but it's just fantastic to see, you know, from an outsider's perspective, as a non-developer, to see everybody just, you know, working towards a common goal that, you know, was something that we all use. Um, and that's, you know, what I hope leads into tomorrow, help you guys, you know, get back and, and really take this a lot of pride. So, uh, our fourth WordCamp, this is Halloween theme. Yes, indeed. John, why don't you talk about that since you were part of the team there? Earlier. Yeah, so this was uh, also Kelly Dorn and, and Mel involved uh, in, in organizing WordCamp. This was a return to Nerd Center. Uh, 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 BU turned out to be unavailable at the date that we needed, and then uh, we just decided to, to seek additional venues. Um, you know, I think the the real sort of great thing that I love, other than the fact we managed to get 10up as a platinum sponsor in the screenshot, completely accidental, it's true, uh, is, is just that it, what it really started to show to me was this is the year that although I was still listed as being on the organizing committee, I really was not in any kind of way driving, and it really felt like uh, the team was carrying on the tradition and making great interesting choices, some of which I might not have made, but we're taking the camp in different directions in, in a way that I really mean that as positive. Like, it just, it was great to see, like, now there's a little bit of a base sense of a, of a way to do a camp, not a formula, but just kind of a basic set of, like, these things work. The foundation, by this point, was able to kind of accept money for people and make some of the choices easier that were harder that first year, where I was just a DBA, collecting money to my own bank account and paying vendors and hoping the IRS didn't care. Don't pay any attention to them. Um, and so it was really great to sort of see WordCamp almost taking on a kind of life of its own uh, with a new set of organizers, a new set of people who had been involved throughout, but sort of now we're in a space where somebody new steps into the lead organizer role each year and, and really can take it and run with it. And uh, that's all I have to say about that was 13. Oh, and we also, that was another, so in the, the first camp I said, you know, having Doc and David was a big, was a big win. Uh, Ethan Marcotte here uh, at Beep, the, uh, or the coiner of the term responsive web design, the author of the book and the article, was somebody we had tried to get to speak in 2012, and then he had some uh, other issues come up and fell through. Uh, but so then we were able to reach out to him and get him to speak again in 2013 as our keynote on the map is not the territory. The video of that talk is not on WordPress TV, but if you look up the map is not the territory, and you can mark on, you can find another version of that, of a similar kind of talk. Fantastic speaker, uh, really just a great opportunity for people in Boston to hear some of the local talent, mm -hmm. to hear some of what makes Boston unique in the web space, which is we really do have some of the sort of leaders of this global industry in our backyard. Um, so, and that also leads to kind of where we're starting to be right now, where you know we've had this. What's fascinating is that, frankly, a lot of us have by now moved away, <laughs> um, and like the torch has really passed. It was really great. This is the first camp that I've been back to since 2010, and um, I didn't recognize a whole bunch of people, which isn't a bad thing. I actually thought that was really great that so many people have not only picked up the baton and run with it, but clearly have a sense of ownership about it too. Like this is theirs. We were sitting in the speaker room and they were talking about what they're gonna do next year. And the year afterwards, people, there was a boat involved. I'm just saying. So I mean, <laughs> I think that level of excitement is great to hear. Boston has always had a really high standard for camp and for the entire community. You don't really have to take my picture, really. It's more um, And like- I can send you some. <laughs> we talked about that. Um, to me, I mean, it was great to think about coming back here because this is this camp has maintained such a high reputation, and the meetup has maintained such a high reputation, and I'm really proud of that. Um, you know, the the meetup is at 2,000 members now, and you know, one of the themes throughout the year has been, or throughout today, that I've really noticed is um, everyone talking about Kurt because. Kurt's given a, a pretty deep commitment to the meetup and to the camp for the past five years, and this is, you know, this is the last one that he's going to take a really big leadership role before he passes it on to. He's tapping out people. 
Um, so I thought it was worthwhile to give him a round of applause and thank him for his <laughs> We agreed the check would go right to my house. Um, and that brings us here. Um, so I think what we wanted to leave with is where does the Boston community go from here, right? Um, because that's the next thing for you guys. Like I said, a lot of us have left and what we really wanted to kind of convince you of today is the worthwhileness, worthwhileness. So just before you move on on that last slide, I wanted to make sure that I didn't miss. So okay. Kelly and Mel, who have really uh, driven this year's camp and been involved for the last several years, Ryko and Tom, Tom's been doing the video recording for both the meetup and the camp for the last five years. Ryko has been involved in driving catering, dealing with sponsors, dealing with events. Rachel Connolly, who's volunteering this year, Kadam White. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting a half dozen other people who have volunteered year after year because I'm not the volunteer wrangler and so I've forgotten all of their names. Um, but the, the point is it's not five people who put on a word camp, it's more like 50 people who put on a word camp over the course of three days. And so I wanted to make sure we didn't leave out some of those folks. Agreed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, but what I think is really interesting is that so, because we had WordCamp Boston, and Jake was involved in WordCamp Boston, we spawned WordCamp Providence and the Meetup in Providence. Um, I went on to found WordCamp Phoenix. Um, Eric is involved in WordCamp Small County in Los Angeles. Ventura County. That's the one. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, things have happened. Jake has gone on to found 10 up. John is now the CEO of Tenna. Um, and I mean, I, I look at like all of the contributions that each of these people made and where they are now, and it's directly related to what they could give. You know, not everybody is a developer. For me, I'm never going to be the person that contributes to core, but I can organize an event. I can teach WordPress, right? So I've done beginner's workshops. Um, that's why we have beginner workshops at WordCamps today, because we started doing them in Phoenix and we started doing free ones around here. So when I look at like this chart of what everyone did that first year and where they ended up, I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me. Do you know at the first WordCamp, Eric was <laughs> pretty much an unemployed accountant who I could rely on to do like a bunch of logistical stuff for me. And because of WordCamp Austin, Jake hired him and he went on to become like a team lead at Automatic today. I mean, WordCamp Boston changed his life, the trajectory of his life. The message is WordCamp Boston will find you a job. <laughs> <laughs> it, could. it could. Um, See me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> because 10 Up is always hiring. Um, uh, Chris, who is our volunteer wrangler, is the director of dev relations at Evernote. Um, I mean, you know, Daisy, who did the website our first year, um, is the director of support at Copy Blogger. These are important people, but they all gave something very specific to what they could contribute. So how do we help you figure out what you can contribute? Because even if it's not one of the things up here, there's something only you uniquely can do. And I know it may seem sometimes like the roles for contributing are very linear and defined, and it, they're not, I promise. If you find a way to be willing, now that you know that there's you know, the possibility, we, WordPress will figure out a way to accept that, that contribution. Um, so the first year, <laughs> this was the this was the uh, best word camp ever. Was the hashtag that we set up, and somehow we've skirted foundation for five years by maintaining that hashtag. <laughs> so, because um, you know they should not compete with other word camps. But let's face it, this is still the best word camp ever. Eva, I think it was Eva. Whatever. Anyway, so um, this is what we would love for you to leave with and tweet with, and um, this is the main thing that the community is us, right? but it means it's really you. So you become that community. Look, I did animations on the slide, people. That was pretty uh, impressive. Uh, Thank you. Not at all, really, not at all. Um, so that's the key. It starts tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's community day. Come to community day. Come prepared to give something, and it's two things. It's A, what you have to offer, your willingness, and then also what's needed. Like, be open to hearing what's needed, because there will people at, be people at Contributor Day who can say, this is what we need, and so it's both parts.
But if you don't know how, you can learn how tomorrow too. Yes, right? that That's is the other important. part of it. Also, be sure to sign up for Contributor Day. There's a URL on the desk out front. <laughs> yeah, don't just sign up, please sign up. Yes, so, uh, yes, I think that's, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I think that's it, right? Yeah, do you, I mean, do you guys have any questions? I mean, are you guys, are you guys interested? Who, who is really interested in, in getting involved in the community? There's a question in the back. <laughs> um, Amanda. I, I live in the very small state of New Hampshire, and uh, I would love to do a word camp. Do you have any advice for a small community for how to do a, not something this big, but something manageable with a, a smaller WordPress community? If, if I have. Um, I, yes. I think actually that's probably the ideal way to start, is to keep it small and to focus on what's really important, which is educating your community. So figure out what your community could, should learn more about. I mean, you're lucky enough to be on the Eastern Seaboard where people can get there relatively easily. Um, obviously talk to foundation, that would be step one, and apply to hold a camp in your area because that is always the first step. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it doesn't, Flash and Bang is awesome. I mean, you know, we should all have sumo wrestlers and whatever. But, um, you know, it's really mostly just about educating. I mean, to me, the two things about WordCamp are the educational aspect and then the networking aspect. And you can't undermine either of those. Yeah, I, I would, only thing that I would add, I agree with all of that. Thank you. I think most, um, I think speaking for Providence, which turned into a camp after Meetup and likewise in Boston, I would really encourage you to start with a Meetup. In terms of practical advice, okay. don't oh, jump I, all the way. That. You're right out the meetup. Two meetups a month. Two meetups a month. Two all right. Groups. I mean, I would look then. Yeah, then you're already on the right track. I would find like who in that community is the organ. You know, the organizer. I would make sure you're buying from people yep. like Mitchell that jumped in early with John to that central .wordcamp.org. Yeah, I mean, there's just and, and even there's a make that word kept up work, make that wordpress that org that's around community. I guess it's slash there's community. There's tons of resources. There's a there. lot of really great stuff out there, and it's so much. You kids today have it so easy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot that the foundation can do in terms of helping you understand what it means to pick a venue and a date and things to look out for, and can help you with funding and can help you hook you up with sponsors who sponsor uh, their, their pillar sponsors. They sponsor across all WordCamps at a certain amount for attendee. There's a lot of help out there um, that can really get you 50% you know, of the way down the road, and that's the first hard part. And it's, and it's good to realize there are lots of different kinds of WordCamps as well. So, and it really depends on the local community and the needs of that community and what the organizers feel like as well. So Boston, you know, you've seen the history we just talked about, has turned out to be a, a very large annual event that attracts a lot of people, not just from the local community. Uh, there are a lot of other work camps that really are much more focused on the local community, and I think if you if you think that local community is of a particular size, I think you know though that's the audience you want to target first and foremost and serve, right? So um, so I would I would think you know and and that's something to look into. It might be interesting to look at some other smaller word camps and see how they've chosen to organize things uh, based on their local community. And I I think it's worth noting um, that. What John said about the amount of, of man hours it takes to produce a camp of this size really can't be underscored, and that's true of large camps. The amount of work is, is just staggering. I mean, it has an actual effect on your annual income, you'll notice. So, uh, not joking. So, there's a real value to keeping it small, to be frank, because it means it's also sustainable. I mean, work camps are scalable, but like, if it's a small community, I mean, I think there's actually, you know, a huge value to keeping it small and organic. Yeah, most of them, I think, the ones that have grown organically, I think are some of the best mm -hmm. that I've participated in. I've been to 75-person camps local to me. They're, they're great. I think they build, they build that community there. I mean, I think if there's an, maybe something we haven't said directly, when we talk about, like, what Boston gave us, I think watching a groundswell of people that were really interested in the platform and excited to be at a camp and showing up to a camp, right, and, and then wanting to become organizers and lead is, I, I think the impact on all, speak, again, speaking for myself, I suspect on all of us, you know, watching the meetup grow has has a profound influence, right, you know, on the organizers as well. I mean, there was, a, I forget the, I forget whose talk this is, it was a famous talk that was referenced this morning in the, uh, the marketing talk about sort of like people choose what they get involved with, people choose the platform that they sell based on not just what it is, but the why, right? I think it's fair to say for myself, I don't wanna speak for others here, but I, I would imagine like the reason 
I can say with confidence the reason when I was sort of working with a bunch of different platforms that I chose to hone in on WordPress was not just because I thought it was a great publishing platform, but because of what I think, starting with Boston, right, what the community gave back, right, that there was something, it felt like it was a movement that was bigger than a piece of software, but a group of people that had a passion, right, and in a very grassroots, not top-down, not heavy-handed marketing way. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, I would actually wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the community. So I'm not a developer. So, you know, I, I joined the community as just a user. Um, and I mean, look, look, look where it's been, you know, five years. Uh, that, that's exactly what it is. If it wasn't for the community, I wouldn't be here. We also wouldn't be here without Kurt. Let's, let's be clear, but yeah. It is. <laughs> Kurt's actually my father. <laughs> we all love each other. <laughs> But um, but yeah. The Q&A period took a whole different <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any other questions? And like really about meetups, uh, uh, contributing camps, our favorite colors, what you can buy us after camp. Oh, I love this question. I want to cry. Um, Poise, she's just a vlogger. What say you? I would say first, stop saying you're just a blogger. Yeah, because uh -huh. that's you are the so core much fundamental more. mission of what we do. Exactly. So one thing you can do is talk about how great WordPress is as a platform to everybody who will listen, and even to some folks who don't want to listen. Um, verging on aggressive. I think it's great. I mean, one of the things that, that I know I've talked with a lot of people about is is also spreading the gospel of WordPress outside WordCamps. I mean, you know, it's definitely important to sort of let people know about the platform we know and love in communities who aren't necessarily there to see WordPress. So that's, I mean, spreading that information is hugely you, important. Yeah, you know how to use WordPress, you can teach other people how to use WordPress. That's, I mean, honestly, as WordPress becomes more functional, it also becomes more complicated. And so the beginner's curve is tougher. The ability for somebody to teach WordPress in a very, in a less technical, more user-oriented way yeah, is incredibly valuable. I mean, start by giving talks. I mean, we're always looking for new speakers at the meetup, right? Just just apply to talk, and you're talking. It's more from there. Yeah, I mean, I think what something John was touching on that you're touching on too, and telling others and speaking about it, like there is no doubt in my mind that what has differentiated WordPress's success, and I think it's very intentional, if organic with WordCamps and meetups, has been that it's a grassroots up thing, right? It's not that there was some guy that was lobbied in corporate IT offices, right, across America being told by heavy end salesmen, you need to use this product or you're going to be hacked. Or it's not the Super Bowl ad. It's not the right. buying ad space at the airport that everybody has to walk it is by. My, you know, it, it is my, my, my friend John here in the front row going and coming to a work camp and then going to his board of ed, right? And people in his community to say, this is an awesome piece of software and I want to show you how I'm using it in my classroom and let me convince you how you should be using it. It's been grassroots up consumer tastes, right? And, and everyday blogger tastes that have, has driven its adoption. Um, That's okay. My case almost never meshes with anybody else's. Hasn't been a problem yet. <laughs> you won't know until you try. I mean, we, we may be just in some sense fortunate that we're in boom times, but I have heard five, six times today alone from people that have their own freelance business, their own small agency, their own larger agency that tells me they don't have a marketing sales force. The number of times I've heard today I don't have a marketing sales force right, that people just want this and they're showing up and they have more work like The reason for that is the spirit that I think exists in this room of people like go out and sell it. We do have a sales force. It's not a corporate, we have to send sales people into offices, but it is telling the story of why to choose this platform and why this is the way you want to go. Let me add something else. I mean, it, so first of all, and I think that there's a lot more you can do besides you know, strange people like us who like standing in front of people and talking, right? So, so we've, we've mentioned speaking, but, but there are lots of other ways, you know, not everybody does like speaking apparently. And so, uh, and they're, they're, well, I like speaking. Well, I went to Emerson College, I was a shy, quiet kid at the time, back in 1980. And I wanted to do speaking, but I didn't know how to do it. And then I graduated, I wanted to work in radio, TV, newspapers, and it just didn't want me. But so, so, so in, in addition, right, so, so there's the, you know, the good work of spreading the gospel of WordPress. In addition to that, as 
a non-developer as, as an end user of some kind, individual needs for WordPress are, are different. And, and I, myself being a developer who's contributed to Core as well, I think there's a lot that an individual end user can also yeah. contribute by sharing their experience of how they use WordPress, how they can't use WordPress, what is, wrong, what is wrong right now for them. And the local community is a great way to collaborate with people who, who have those programming skills or are able to collaborate with you and improve your workflow or improve WordPress itself based on your experience. Um, and that's a lot of how WordPress itself has grown over the years. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, it's part of the sort of the more that people work with the platform, the more insular the community can become, and it's really helpful sometimes to, to talk to people who've never used it before. Sit them down in front of a screen and ask them to understand the difference between pages and, pages and posts, right? And, I mean, there's stuff that we kind of take for granted, and really getting outsiders' perspectives on it is, all, is really helpful. That's just a simple example. So I guess the last question I really have, five minutes. Excellent, thank you, sir. It's a very clear sign. This is a very well-organized work thing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Another way to volunteer. <laughs> um, so the last question is, since we do have so many of the organizers in this room, not us necessarily, but other people in the audience that in, in like, the shirts, um, what do you guys want to see happen with the WordPress community here and at the next WordCamp? I mean, like, what, what else do you want? I mean, I guess that, what else do you want? Um, at like the meetups, what topics aren't being covered or you would like covered more or speakers or aspects of CAM? Excellent, you are doing a perfect job then. No, yes. Uh, I'd love to see more about different applications of WordPress. There was a wonderful talk earlier today about how WordPress is being used for a local community of journalists and stuff. And it was a very non technical talk. It was all about creative ways to use it. I think, to be honest, we're Name WordPress was probably mentioned only ten times. So WordPress as an app platform, as a platform. Yeah, as a platform for doing creative things. What can you do with WordPress to be broad in the scope? So more case study kind of storytelling. I like learning more about custom post types. Custom post types. I see people taking notes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Your voices are heard. Excellent. So case stories from like people who have actually built things with it and how it was built. Especially in education. How, where will we find these educational institutions here in Boston? So <laughs> it's hard because Boston's not really a college town. Yeah. So, so in, in 2011, something that we tried to do is actually have explicitly a, a higher ed track. So for about half a day or a day. Um, so I, I'm at MIT, and, and Chris was at one of our the organizers was at Harvard at the time. Or had he moved? Yes, but. Um, so we, we used we used our network and tried to pull colleagues and people in, and we had a very well attended and very popular higher ed track that was uh, mostly non technical. I mean, it was about sort of how WordPress was useful for certain applications in large educational institutions. Um, and similarly, I think this goes back to sort of the, the organizing piece about WordCamps. I think. That's a uniquely Boston area thing that was possible. I've also been to a work camp in the in the was the Vegas area that had uh, that had a real estate track, say, right? Um, you know, and so there are what's that? That was Phoenix. What? Excuse me, at Phoenix, which was very also very well organized. Um, it was near Las Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, as compared to Boston, broad, broadly <laughs> construed. Um, so yes, I, I, I think these kinds of case study uh, talks are, are wonderful as well, and I, I, I think it would be great to bring that back as well. Maybe. Just getting those speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a really important thing to note, that you guys also make up the speakers for the meetup, and so you have those stories. Mm -hmm. so, any bring, bring us the speakers, and we'll make it right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anybody else with the things like see topics covered?
She's taking notes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Val. I'm really good at That's what we call volunteering. Um, this was the best question because we're actually not taking responsibility for this. Right. So it's just, you know, what are your what ideas for What else would you like? I'm sure Mel can yes. help you out. Yes. Rick. So, Amanda, why don't, or Kirk, why don't you tell people if they don't come up with ideas here, where can they present them? They can tweet them, they can... <laughs> why don't you tell them? Yeah. <laughs> why? Where? Huh? Where? You can tweet them with what hashtag? WP Boston? So the hashtag is WP Boston. Right. Oh, Boston WP. Boston, Boston WP. WP. Uh, so that's a hashtag. You can tweet it, I've Facebook it, Instagram it, whatever. Yes, I know. Yeah. We're, Check out Boston we're WP. We're landing the plane. For more info on the meetup. Right. Thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. Actually, we really appreciate you guys coming. Thank we're, you. Yes, thank you.